Bible study can be a complex thing, all right? And there are many truths in the Bible that you have to search for. You have to search for them. A lot of this stuff, you're not going to go to Google and find out. You see, you have to actually go and read, and you have to study, and you have to search. This is one of those things. So let's dig into it. Luke 1, 5. If you would please turn there. Luke 1, 5. Zacharias, of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Now I wrote up here, the course of Abiah. This small truth will tell you and show you how complex some of these things can be and how some truths you have to deeply search into the Bible to find out. Just this one course of Abiah right here, all right? I'm going to explain this as fast as I can, but I want to use some references too, so we're going to be flipping a little bit, all right? In 1 Chronicles 6, you want to turn there real quick, 1 Chronicles 6. First Chronicles 6, verse 1. The sons of Levi are Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. Got them right here. Gershon, Kohath, Merari. Now, if we continue on and go further, we see that you'll see that Kohath's sons, Kohath's sons, are Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. Turn to Numbers 3 2. Amram. So we have Levi, we have Kohath, and we have Amram. Who is the father of Aaron and Moses and Miriam? Can anybody tell me Amram's wife's name? What? What is it? Jacobin. Jacobin. Come here, that's just a question. I was just testing. <laughs> Jacobin. All right. So Levi, Kohath, Amram, and then Amram and Jacobin have Aaron, Moses, Miriam. Numbers 3 2 tells you the sons of Aaron. All right? Right here. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Or Ithamar. Now we know, if you do your study in Numbers 3 4, right here, it says, And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. <laughs> and Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. So Aaron has four sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar. Nadab and Abihu, they die by strange fire in Numbers 3-4. There's two sons left of Aaron. God said that Aaron's sons are going to be the priests. We know that, right? Now, there's a, you'll hear preachers say this sometimes. They'll say, all priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. Do we understand why now? Right here. <laughs> Levi has three sons. Only one son, this is the lineage that it goes through. 
Yeah. You see? That's why, but all of these are Levites. All of them. But there's only one line that goes to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar. We see that. That's the way that works. Now, turn to number 16 right quick. Number 16. I want to tell you this story really quick as we go through here. Start at verse 1. Number 16, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar. I got his name right here. Ishar. See that? Not Amram. Ishar. The son of Levi. And Dathan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab and On, and the sons of Peleth, or Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. Reuben is the brother of Levi. All right? So these men are not Levites at all. And they rose up against Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, You take too much upon you. Seeing all the congregation, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, or why then, do you lift yourself up above the congregation of the Lord? And Moses heard it and fell on his face. And he spake unto Korah and said unto the company, Even tomorrow the Lord will show you who are his, and who is holy, and will cause him to come near unto him. Even him who he hath chosen will he cause to come unto him. This do... Take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire in them. Put incense in them for the Lord tomorrow, and it shall be that that man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. You take too much upon you, you sons of Levi. And Moses and Korah, Moses said unto Korah, Here I pray you, you sons of Levi. Do you seem it but a small thing unto you? That the God of Israel had separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. And he and he hath brought you near to him and all your brethren, the sons of Levi, with you. And you seek the priesthood also. All right. Now we're going to skip down to verse 13. Well, verse 12. And Moses, said to, Moses sent to call Dathan and Abur, Abiram, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come. Then they start telling this to Moses. They say, Is it a small thing that you have brought us up out of the land of, that flows with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except you make yourself altogether a prince over us? Moreover, you have done, or you have not brought us into the land that flows with milk and honey, or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will you put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Those boys are saying, you're not going to put our eyes out like you put their eyes out. Right? And so if we continue to read this story, which we're not going to, but what, what ends up happening is they end up filling censers. 250 men end up filling censers and coming to the tabernacle and standing there. And Aaron's with his censer. And God ends up killing all of them. That's what happens. Well, why did he end up doing that? Well, because Korah was trying to, what he was trying to do is take upon the priesthood, even though he was a Levite. He was saying, I'm a Levite. We're all holy. We're all holy before the Lord. How is it that you and Aaron make princes out of yourselves among us when we're all the same? We're all the sons of Levi. But we see that they're not all the same. They were Levites. But they were not that direct line where God said only Aaron's sons are going to be the priests. And Korah was trying to take to himself the priesthood. Now there's lessons to be learned throughout this. You know, uh, many people talk about uh, not taking on things that God hasn't given you and things like that. Uh, but we're not going to go into that. So Korah, he tried to take on the priesthood when he was not designated. His lineage was not designated to be the priesthood. Now, what's interesting is a lot of people don't look at it like this, but the strange fire that Nadab and Abihu got killed by, God killed them because they made strange fire. Nobody knows what the strange fire is, 
But these men, these 250 men, were told to bring censers. What do you put in a censer? Incense, right? They also burnt strange fire. How is it that only Aaron survived? Well, he was, his lineage was de designated to be the priesthood, but he knew the ingredients to the incense. Turn to Exodus 30 right quick. Exodus 30. Verse 34, Exodus 30, 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto, you, take unto thee sweet spices, stockte, and anicha, and gal, galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense. Uh, of each shall there be like weight, and thou shalt make it uh, a perfume, a confection after the art of apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt bear some of the very small, and put it before the the testimony of the tabernacle of the congregation where I will meet you there it shall be unto you most holy and as for the perfume which you shall make you shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof or shall, for it shall be unto you holy for the Lord and he says this whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from his people nobody was allowed to make this but Aaron mm -hmm. and his sons the high priest you see so when, it, when Moses says, go on, take your censers, make me some fire. And when they brought it to the tabernacle of the Lord, of course, the Lord did the same thing that he did to Nadab and Abihu, and he killed them all. See. Now, so we see the lineage here. This is the lineage. Sons of Aaron. Now, because these two sons are gone, we have two sons left. Turn to 1 Chronicles 6. sons of Aaron, the sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. But Nadab and Abihu died before their father and had no children. Therefore, Eleazar and Ithamar executed the priest's office. And David, the king, distributed them both Zadok of the sons of Eleazar and Ahimelech, the sons of Ithamar, according to their offices in their service. So the time of David, the high priest was Zadok and Ahimelech, which are the sons of Eleazar and Ithamar, the sons of Aaron, do that. And what David does, he says, and there, verse 4, and there were more chief men found of the sons of Eleazar than the sons of Ithamar, and thus they were divided. Among the sons of Eleazar there were 16 chief men, 16, of the house of their fathers, and 8 among the sons of Ithamar. 8. Was that... That is 24. 24. David, in Chronicles 24, divided the priests, the sons of Eleazar and Ithamar, into 24 courses or 24 families. That's what happened. And then he goes through and he starts uh, naming the courses. Now I want you to look at verse 8. I mean, sorry, verse 10. Verse 10. The seventh to... Hakaz and the eighth to Abijah. This word right here, the course of Abiah, because this was written in the Greek, the Old Testament is written in the Hebrew. That word Abiah is the same thing as Abijah. The same thing. All right. Now, we're not going to turn there, but in Chronicle, First Chronicles twenty-three, David does the same thing with the Levites, with all these people that are not in this lineage. He divides them into what they're called what they're called the priest's assistants. And they had all kinds of different jobs. 
the where I got my information about their jobs was from this man right here, Alfred Edersheim. Alfred Edersheim was a Jewish convert, biblical scholar, uh, Jewish historian. He talks about in a book called uh, The Temple and Its Ministries in the Times of Jesus Christ. He talks about all the priest assistants and how, and he breaks down the temple and how it's all laid out and what they all did. And there was porters, which were gatekeepers and musicians and singers and all the priests had different times of the day that they came in and did their, or uh, they were slotted by weeks to come in and do their jobs. Now, this institution, I wrote up here, this institution right here, where they were broken up into 24 families, 24 priest assistant families, and David laid out all their positions and jobs. It talks about that in the Chronicles, all right? This institution stood until the Babylonian captivity, all right? David, well, David was around 1,000 B.C. Then you had Solomon, it continued with him. And then in 586 B.C. was the third and last exile where, the, where Nebuchadnezzar came and grabbed all the, uh, the Jews and took them to Babylon. 586 was the last day. So at 586, they're in Babylon. They're scattered all over the place. Up there. Now, they're up there for 70 years. And we can do a whole different study on that. Why they're up there for 70 years and, and about the land. But we're not going to do that. But they're up there. And this institution goes away. It goes away. Because they start adapting to the Babylonian life. And this is where you get the rabbi. The rabbi comes in. The the, uh, uh, the synagogue gets created. This is where it all happens in Babylon. So, turn to Ezra 2. Ezra 2. So they're in Babylon for 70 years. If you subtract 70, that's 516 BC. They come back with Ezra. Nehemiah, in between that time, the temple, and, uh, I mean, the walls get built back up, 513, takes them three years, and then Nehemiah goes back to Babylon, all right? So 516, they come back with Ezra. Now look at Ezra 2. It says, now these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those which had been carried away. Whom Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon had carried away unto Babylon, and then came again unto Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to his city. This is telling you that these the people that went from Jerusalem got carried away to Babylon. Now they're coming back to Jerusalem. And so he goes and he starts naming all the children that have come back. Alright? All the children that have come back. Look at verse 36. <clears throat> What's the first two words of that verse 36? priests, right? And this is what it says. The children of Jediah, Emer, Pasher, and Haram. Four families. Four families came back. How many families were there to begin with? That means 20 priestly families stayed in Babylon. 20. Edersheim says that only 60,000 Jews came back. But on the Euphrates River, there were millions of them. Millions. Over a 70-year period. But only 60,000 came back. And it actually gives you the numbers. We're not going to go over that. But I just want to show you that only four of the priestly families came back. I want to read what Edershot has to say right quick about that. He says... Now, this, this number right here is also, he got this number from Josephus. Josephus and Philo, they were both Jewish historians, gave him, gave him that number, 60,000 came back. This is what Edersheim says. He says, to restore the original number, we see only four came back. There were 24 that David separated out of the two sons of Aaron. Out of the Four that came back to get the original number, they drew five lots for each family. Five.
five lots for each family. So you have one, two, three, four, or you have one, and then they did five on top of that. That would make 24 families again. All right? For most had not returned, and so to form the 24 courses, which were to bear the ancient names. It says the course of Abaya was not the same as the original Abijah. They were pulled from the priest assistants because 20 of the families, the priestly class, stayed in Babylon. Now, it does call him a priest. It says Zacharias is a priest. But did Zechariah know that he probably, his lineage was probably not priesthood? It was 500 years before him. It wasn't his fault. He only knew what his family was doing, you see? But this goes to show you, this one little truth right here takes all this to find out. One line, the course of Abiah, takes all this to find out. You have to research all that to find out 